Mm, bop, 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 the tabletop super show. Mm, bop, 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 the tabletop super show. I'm Stevie Ray. Welcome to the tabletop super show. Today, I want to talk about something that you can do to improve your painting techniques and style by creating what I like to call the palette monster. So, a lot of us as miniature painters use wet palettes to uh, produce our models, and we end up with a uh, you know, these sheets of parchment paper that have a bunch of different paint on them. A lot of times this paint dries and uh, just kind of gets wasted. Now, what I like to do is, as I'm working on other models, every few months I like to pick a, a specific model. In this instance, this is a Nolzer's Shambling Mound. It has a lot of different uh, detail, different uh, textures and things on it. And it's a good model to use to practice on. And as I finish models, I like to take some of the extra paint that's there on whatever model I'm finishing and slap it onto what I like, my, my current palette monster. Now this one I'm actually doing in a specific style and trying to practice pointillism, which is actually just like taking paint and op opacity and just using dots to create the color over many layers. And then on the base, I'm trying to um, do a impressionist style thing. Now you can't see it that well, but what I'm gonna do is put this under the macro lens in a little bit and uh, add, slap a little bit of paint on it to show you guys. Now, why do this? Well, a lot of us as painters get stuck into a you know mire of paint by numbers. And I'd really like to see more uh, model painters break away from this. And that's the you know tried and true base shade and highlight where you highlight from the highest value on the top or the where the light's hitting down to black. Now as good as that is, and it's, I don't want to knock it because it gets your miniatures tabletop ready, it, you aren't getting uh, practicing your uh, colors, uh, theory, and hue, and you're uh, really not gaining any, uh, gaining any skill as a painter by just doing that paint by numbers thing. So I'd really like to see more people create and use something like a palette monster to uh, improve and you know, just explore the colors, explore light, and uh, explore depth, and just, you know, slap colors onto their models that uh, don't always have to make sense, but will create, in the end, an uh, interesting composition. So, when I'm done with this one, and I'm, this, this is the third one I've created, I've started doing this a couple years back, um, It'll probably take me a couple more months of just, you know, general model painting to actually finish this guy. But uh, when he's done, I'm hoping to have a better understanding of pointillism and a better understanding of impressionism. And, uh, you know, that's really the idea behind this is to grow as painters and artists and uh, be able to produce different styles that we wouldn't necessarily readily want to apply to miniatures, but that definitely have a place there. So... Saying that, we're going to go ahead and go behind me here to the overhead cam and uh, where I have my wet palette set up. And uh, we're going to put a little bit of points on here and uh, work a little bit more on the base and uh, like give you guys a better idea of exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, guys. So here's the current palette monster I'm working on, the Nolzer Shambling Mound. And uh, I've been doing, like I said, I've been trying to do a pointillism uh, slash, here's the base, slash uh, impressionism style. To try to just, you know, learn a little bit more about both of these styles and, you know, become better at painting. So I'm going to take my uh, Da Vinci Maestro Tobolsky Kalinsky Sable Series 11 brush, size 0, and a few paints that I have on the palette. Just for the purposes of this, normally you just use the paints that you're, uh, as you finish a miniature, that you're done with. In this case, I put a little Oxford Blue, a little uh, Model Color German Yellow, and then a little bit of uh, Army Painter's Void Shield Blue. And what we're going to be doing is, let's get a little bit of paint onto this. So we're going to start with the Void Shield Blue. And I'm just going to start picking out a few little spots to uh, add the Void Shield Blue to. You see, as I'm working on this model, it's going to get many colors over many different layers. And some of this Void Shield is going to get co colored, covered with other colors as I paint. And with acrylics, it's always going to dull down a little bit from what it looks like as the paint's applied. So it's something that's good to know. So we've got a little bit of Void Shield Blue. Let's add just random dots working on the pointillism. And 
We're slowly building it up as I have been over the past, you know, uh, seven or eight weeks. Just adding color. Trying to create in visual interest in what you're working on is always a good thing. Even if it doesn't always make sense when you're starting it. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a little bit of uh, German yellow. Here, let's thin this down just a little bit. Ding. A little bit of thinning. Okay. Going right next to where I was working. I'm going to add some more little points. Add some points here. Just on his uh, weird, you know, trunky branch tendrils that he has coming out of his, uh, out of his face. A pretty cool model. That's why I wanted to add some visual interest instead of just making this model, you know, brown and green. Seems kind of boring for a model that was uh, sculpted really nicely like this one was. So, add a little bit here. Like I said, I mean, as you finish, you spend a couple minutes working on your palette monster. And uh, for the underneath, since I haven't quite finished it, the underneath still has a lot of, you know, brown underneath it. So that's why I wanted to get some of this. Let's thin it down to a little, little bit of this uh, Oxford blue, which is kind of a purple blue. And we're going to start going underneath. And starting to build up uh, shadowy colors where the shadow is. So that way people are looking underneath. They aren't just going to see blue or black or purple or whatever. They're going to see a lot of blended point colors on this uh, model. Which is pretty neat. So we're also going to add a little bit to the base too. Let's get a little bit of this German yellow. We'll start adding just little tiny bits here. Building it up in this Impressionist style. Don't worry if you make a mistake or you get too much color anywhere on, on these because it's not going to be a mistake because you're going to keep layering this over time until it uh, really builds up into something that at the end is going to look really cool. Um, And I got a little bit of uh, Pro Acryls Red here as well. So we're going to take a little bit of that and we're going to add it to a couple spots. And then I'm going to call this one done until I finish my next model. And then we'll just keep, you know, as we work, we continue to build up on this. And then over time, this becomes something with great visual interest. And that's the kind of thing I'd really like to see more of. So, you know... Hope you guys enjoyed this and it gives you some ideas and helps you guys to grow as a painter, which is what I really want to see. So anyways, that's the palette monster. Hope you guys enjoy it. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you guys plan on creating a palette monster, please drop me a line in the comments below. And uh, by all means, go ahead and post any images of anything like this that you have to my Facebook page, The Tabletop Super Show. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already to uh, not miss any of the uploaded content. And uh, give it a like if you found any use out of it. Until the next time, guys. Adieu.